Let me tell you something. That which is born of God. I said that which is born of God. Cannot be eradicated. By no demonic spirit. No Jezebel. No Leviathan. No Bermoth. No anti-spirit. No anti-Christ. No weapon formed against this prophet shall prosper. It shall not prosper. I prophesy into the nation of South Africa. Do not touch my anointing. Do not touch my anointing. There's coming a season of revealing for encounter like this nation has never seen before. There is coming favor upon this prophet that this nation has not yet experienced. Your enemies shall become your allies. Those that mock the prophetic in your life shall seek your face and find the favor of God and their ministries shall be turned around by the power of Jesus Christ. You shall go onto national television. You shall go onto faith channel. You shall preach the gospel from Cape Town to Cairo. I will give you the air. I will give you Europe. I will give you the United States of America, says the Lord. And the signal and the sound of legitimacy in the spirit. For the Lord says, son, you have gone through trial and you have been tested and you have found favor with me. This favor I shall not remove of your body. I shall not remove it of your life. I shall not remove it of your finances. But I shall multiply you and increase your children by the power of my spirit. Because you have chosen to forgive. Because you have chosen to love your enemies. Even when they have sat in a circle and decided to crush your life. The Lord says, I have stood with you. And now says the Lord, here is the mystery. For she calls herself a prophetess. She calls herself a prophetess. But I call her, says the Spirit of God, Jezebel. And yet she has taught things about you that is a lie. Just like it was in the book of Revelation. So it is being, says the Spirit of God. And the words that have been spoken have come from the cockatrice spirit, says the Lord. For it has been gossip and slander and lies, says the Spirit of God. To try and send a spirit of witchcraft to destroy your life. So here's what the Lord says. Tonight you may preach on this bewitched of indoor thing. But tonight, says the Lord, I manifest this thing for you, prophet. Tonight the Lord says, you will not preach what you thought you were going to preach. But tonight, says the Lord, I will preach to you my word, says the Holy Ghost. The witches that have had a covenant against your life, the witches that have cut themselves in a covenant against your wife, even in Kruger's door. The Lord says, tonight I address them by the power of heaven. I address the demons that they are serving and they will tear them apart in 24 hours. Somebody shout. Get to your feet and shout! 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 If you 
watching. Shut up. And yet the Lord in his mercy, Revelation 2.20, I gave that woman Jezebel time to repent for what she was teaching. I gave her time to repent, but she has not listened. Therefore she will fall onto a bed of sickness. And everybody that committed fornication with her shall fall into the same bed of affliction. But as for you and your household, I shamar you. I hedge you, says the Lord. For the Lord says, you are the apple of my eye. And I love you with an everlasting love. I will bring the prophets to you. This is your season to be revealed. God says, this time, this time, I will bring the prophets to you. Chuck Pierce will come to you, says the Lord. I see the Spirit of the Lord say, even you and Chuck Pierce will be friends. The Lord says, I will bring Graham Cook to you, says the Lord. I will bring prophets to you. And this is what they will say. The hand of the Lord is upon your life. The hand of of the Lord is upon your life for many son many many listen the last generation smelt like donkeys I prophesy to you by the Spirit of God I don't care if I'm in trouble I've never been famed or named because I'm a mystery but the man of the Spirit is like the wind no one knows what he's about to do next he arrives at the place, he speaks the word of God, and then you don't understand where he's even. So the Lord has sent me tonight to tell you this. The Lord says, the last generation of prophets smelt like donkeys. They were looking for their father's donkeys so they could do business. But God says, this season, I smell you. Come here. I smell you, says the Lord. I do not smell the donkey on you. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord says, I smell the sheep on you. And when I called you, I called you like a David. You were young and you were immature. And you didn't know nothing about this calling. So the Lord says, in the house of a strange man you went. But you submitted to your soul. You submitted to your soul. And even though you had the power many times to take the spear and to destroy the life of soul, the Lord says tonight, you have not done that. But you said I would not touch the anointed of God. And therefore the Lord says today, this is your third anointing. Now I give you Judah. Now I give you Israel. The Lord says, now I vindicate you. Somebody shout. Come on, shout. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You need to praise Him. You need to praise Him. You need to praise Him. Africa, you need to praise Him. America, you need to praise him. David lives. I said, David lives. I said, David lives. And so the Lord said, if I be a prophet, then let me be without fear. Let me fear no man. But let me fear the one that has the power. While David was with the sheep, Saul is calling up a witch. 
No longer shall prophets call up witches. The day of the occult in the prophetic is over. The day of divination in the prophetic is over. The day of soothsaying in the prophetic is over. The day of drinking petrol in the prophetic is over. The day of the Davids have come. Come on, let's give Jesus. Come on, praise him, praise him. appreciate the prophecy from true prophets I really get we, we as prophet we as prophets don't get prophecies I need you to understand that it's you know and uh, and we need that and that word I will treasure that word I will um, thank you uh, that word I will treasure that word I will uh, uh, you know so if it's just a matter of time that's it then tables will turn for you my enemies have sown into my life my enemies have given me finances against their will. I had two enemies where Jesus came into their dream. And one said, settle all Leon's debt. Another person came in. He said, give this amount to Leon. The, I, the person I kicked out of the church. I said, why are you giving this? I phoned them. They said, Jesus came to in a dream and said, I must give it to you. Now, that anointing to be upon you. That whatever the enemy has stolen, he will pay back seven times. The tables will turn. I know there are many attacks that you see publicly on us. Listen, it will, it will spread and expand the church. Jesus was called a fraudster, a con man, a madman, and his fame went out before him. Are you guys with me? The Lord said to me, as I was driving here, tell the church, the heavens is opened. The gateway of heaven is here. Angels are ascending and descending. And he said to me, I'll bring in an angelic existence that is going to break the bondage tonight. You will not have me. You will not have the Holy Ghost only. You're going to have angelic assistance in this place that will go to the houses, go to the places where curses have been sent from and it will be broken. Devil's Dorps time is over. We will build the biggest church here. Give me three years. Are you guys with me? When Pastor Chris said this church appeared here, it literally appeared here. Listen to this. Now I want you to understand this. As I'm going to uh, just go through this and I'm just bringing a point through it's too late to, 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 we want to minister to you. Now, it happened in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for war to fight with Israel. And Akish said to David, you surely know that you will go out with me to battle, you and your men. So David said to Akish, surely you know what your servant can do. And Akish said to David, therefore, I will make you one of my chief guardians forever. 
Now Samuel had died. So this Samuel died. An era of the prophetic ended there. Samuel brought in a new era. He was a prophet over prophets. Standing over the other prophets. He brought in a new era. But when he died, there was a great loss. I need you to understand this. When Eli was busy dying, his eyes was blind. When Samuel was in the temple, the Bible says the lamp of God went out. There was no widespread revelation or vision because there was no prophet. But Samuel took in and took in a new dispensation, an era. Are you guys with me? The prophetic was attacked in this nation. That's why God blesses prophets. We go through trem- I never wanted to be a prophet. I wanted to be a revivalist. That was what I wanted to do. I did it. I wanted to do that. But I was a prophet. I knew it, but I never wanted to be one. And so people are like, oh, you just want to be one. You just want to put the title in front. Do you know what damage you get by calling yourself a prophet? <laughs> You'll see death threats every week. But that's why God chooses to, venge, to, 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 to vindicate the blood of the prophets. And He blesses them. That's why I will never apologize. But one thing I know, that you have a prophetic right. You have a prophetic inheritance. If you're in a prophetic church, you can open up the fridge and take food out of it. There's things that belong to you that you have not worked for. It's a prophetic right that a pastoral church cannot give to you. It's it's nothing of not less. They just cannot. They haven't paid the price we paid. Oh my God, did we pay prices. I would have never said yes for the call if I knew what was happening. Never. <laughs> I was going to die for Jesus, you know. That's when God tricks you. He comes in by that time when you're on the honeymoon. And He gives you your, the call. And then, uh, you know, because He knows you're in love and you're going to say yes. So if you've never been in love with God in a honeymoon season, you'll never get to the call of God. He shares it with you in a honeymoon season. That you can have it, you can say yes there. I wanted to die. I wanted to go preach in the Asian countries. My dream was to go die in an Asian country. I promise you. Some people now, they want to just watch Netflix and movies when they get saved. My first two years, I was water. Just drank water. The Holy Spirit walked into my room like a person. That's why I preach. He doesn't, he's not a smoke. If you see him coming into, walking into your room, which maybe 0.5% of Christians will see, he will come in like the person of Jesus walking into your room. He came in as a bodily form onto Jesus. And he sat on my bed and he began to tell me, and I was on water, I was on this, I was, I, I, when I said I took the call of God serious, but I gave him my all. I sought God. I prayed through the nights. Matthew is not here, right? Eh? Matthew would be too. Matthew would come. Matthew finished him in our church. He was 15 or something. I would be in my room praying hours. He would be too scared to come in. He stands on the outside. Four hours. Too scared to come in. Kids would stand queues down the hallway uh, into the kitchen just to get deliverance. If they walked into my room, there was deliverance. He didn't pray. And those days we saw, and my biggest dream, I said, send me to Asia, I want to die for you. Like, you know, I want to be tortured and die. That was my my dream. Now people are so lukewarm and wondering why is things not going right. Shut up. You're doing nothing. You're taking offense by this church. You're gossiping there. You're leaving here. Get serious. If you want to see Kruger's door, Randfontein, all the surrounding areas changed. I came here not because I wanted to. I came here because I was commanded to. There's a big difference for somebody planning a church because they need money and another one planning church that costs them money. But what I'm saying is the seriousness of the call.
take it serious like you've never. It requires that. Otherwise, somebody never gets into it. It doesn't matter how many friends you lose, how many people you lose. Take it serious. It doesn't matter what age you are. If you miss the honeymoon period, it's over. Are you guys with me? And I pray that tonight there will be a fresh honeymoon period for you. Deliverance. And I said bewitched because many Christians are bewitched. I have refused for years to submit to the witchcraft of man and the pleasing of man. That's why he found it in his good pleasure to use me. But it was not easy. I say to people, those who walk these footsteps, there are people who curse the, these footsteps every day. Walking here in front here. They, that's their job, is to curse us and bring us down. People repenting, telling me they've done wrong. They, they, you know, God worked with them and they turned around. And that's great. But every day, it's like you get rid of one, new, one enemy and then a new one comes the next day. Eventually, I realized it's just there to shape me. And we got a big accusation. And there's nothing I can do about it. It's only God's intervention. But you need to know that it's blessed to be associated with the persecuted. How can I have people living in my house for how many years and there's never been one accusation in those who are close to me and on my staff, not one. That we fake prophecy or cook it or that I'm sleeping with girls or nothing, not one. They'll tell you the opposite. Put on the scripture. I want us to go through it quickly. Put on the scripture. Uh, now Samuel had died. And all Israel had lamented for him and buried him in Ramah in his own city. And Saul had put the mediums and the spiritists out of the land. Now just that sentence, I can go on the whole evening. Because there's something wrong in that sentence. I need you to understand the time and the days of Samuel. Even Samuel was confused for spiritists. Saul consulted Samuel for his father's donkeys. He consulted them. Many would consult other spiritists. Okay, that was when it was a seer, and let, let's, leave, let's leave that. Uh, so now Samuel died in Israel, it lamented again. Okay, next verse. But Samuel was the prophet over prophets. You need to understand that Samuel shifted the era of the prophetic. Then the Philistines gathered together and came and encamped at Shunem. So Saul gathered all Israel together and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. Now listen, say with me, Saul was afraid. Lord, say this to me. There's a generation of Saul, and when I say Saul, I'm not speaking an elderly generation. I'm speaking of those who have received a spirit of Saul that has killed churches with a message of condemnation and legalism, criticism, Power needs to return to the church. Let me tell you why power is left. Witchcraft. You know, I'll show you now. When Saul so, so sons, he was afraid. Saul was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid. His heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him. Certainly the Lord did not answer him. Either by dreams or by Urim and Theorem and by the prophets. That's how God speaks. God speaks by dreams, visions, Urim and Theorem, by prophets of those days. I'll leave the Urim and Theorem for you. many of you know that. God did not speak to him. Just because, you know, Saul was with the prophets. They said, is he among the prophets? And a prophet went around the city and he could prophesy. Just because God used you in prophecy doesn't mean he has to speak through you. I can phone God. I can take my phone and phone him. He can answer the call, but there can be no voice. Where's the phone? Like, like, or well, let me phone. You got us. So, you got us. Let me phone a. Ah, phone me. So I'm God. You are the fake prophet. So he calls me. I can choose green or red. I say, oh, okay. Answer. You can talk all you want. 
I answered the call. You feel the access in the spirit, but there's nothing. God's voice is his sovereignty. He chooses, not us. Good dog. That's God. <laughs> so, so God chose not to answer him. Next verse. And you know, I told you how I told Centurion how I preach. You know, when I said next verse, I said something's coming. I don't know what's coming. That's how I preach. Then Saul said to his servants, find me a woman. You might not understand what I'm preaching tonight. I do. Find me a woman who is a medium that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, in fact, you know, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. Next verse, come. So Saul disguised himself and put him on the other clothes, on other clothes. Where's David? Is he here? Just, just listen to this. He disguised himself and he put on other clothes. And he went and two men went with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, please conduct the seans for me and bring up for me the one I shall name to you. Do you know how many ministers have gone to witches in this city? Do you know how many pastors are murdered? I'm speaking of physically murdered in this city. That's why God sent me as a prophet outside of the city. And I have another church and I have a ministry, meaning we don't live off the church here. Nothing, not one cent. We put in here. But if I had to live off here, I wouldn't make it. Not because you're giving us bad, not, not, not at all of that. It's a spirit of witchcraft that is here. That has not caused one church in this city to go more than 500 people. Not one. When we had our conferences, we were the biggest in the city. And yeah, they can come and come. They say they have, attend they have members of a thousand. There's like hundred attending, okay? When we had the conference, we were the biggest. And then lockdown hit. Wait till next, till two weeks from now. I said to you, before the end of this year, we'll pack it out again into overflows everywhere. Wait, where's the scripture? Go on. So Saul disguised himself, put on the clothes, and he went to two of them. And they came to the woman by night, and he said, Please conduct the seance. Next verse. Bring up the one that I shall name to you. Then the woman said to him, Look, you know what Saul has done. How he has cut off the mediums and the spiritists from the land. Why then do you lay a snare of my life to cause me to die? I can preach the whole, guys, I can preach so long with this. Next verse. I'll, I'll just get to the point. And Saul swore to her by the Lord, say, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? Say with me, bring up. Listen to this. Because the question is, is Saul a demon? Uh, when he brought up Samuel, the witch of Endor, is this now a demon or was it really Samuel? There's two schools of thought. But I tell you what I say, Samuel. Then the woman said, whom shall I bring up for you? And he said, bring up. Where did people go when they die? No, no, down. Abram's bosom. And he said, bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul saying, why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. The witch has more discernment than what Saul had at that time. Witches has more discernment and power than what pastors have and other ministers. Because we've allowed witchcraft to come into the church. And I'll show you how. Not through sorcery. There's many ways. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried with her. She said, why have you deceived me? You are Saul. 
even though he disguised himself. She, by divination, she saw the real Samuel. She heard Samuel talking to her. And she saw Samuel. Saul never saw Samuel. And the king said to her, Do not be afraid. What did you see? So he didn't see it. Eh? Couldn't see. And the woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit, say with me, ascending out of the earth, out of Abraham's bosom. But please, this is not the devil having power over Samuel or anything. I'll, I'll, I'll explain now. Are you guys with me? And I'm saying for our theologian friends, there are two schools. Yes, you can choose, okay? I saw his spirit. And so he said to her, what is his form? And she said, an old man is coming up. And he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed down. Now Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And Saul answered, I am deeply distressed for the... Listen, the deception in Saul went so bad. That he thought he was actually divinely communicating here and he's going to get a solution. But God showed us sovereignty to say even if a witch tries to call up somebody or something, I will overpower the thing and I'll intervene. It doesn't matter what curse or witchcraft has been done against you. They might say you will not have finances. Or you will not, you will go broke, or this will happen, you will lose your business. And a witch might have, especially in Kruger's door, a witch or a Freemason or so on might have said, one, two, three, say with me, but God. Say it again, say, but God. He will intervene, he will show his hand and his sovereignty to say, I control even witchcraft and they think they are in control. They would want to do their will, but my will will just happen and take place. Are you guys with me? Why have you disturbed me? And so, listen. The witch and the spirit of Endor that has come into the body of Christ is men of God that has lost sight and become like a soul and has in, consulted witchcraft, divination to hear the words of God. And some of them even get a result. Saul got a result. Are you guys with me? And that ends up in the church being dead. No power. I'm not saying all the ministers. Please understand me. I'm speaking very prophetically. Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? I'm deeply distressed for the first time. Next verse. And God has departed from me and does not answer me anymore, neither by prophets nor by dreams. See, when prophets don't prophesy over you anymore, when God's word is silent, you know, never worry if a prophet screams at you. Worry if a prophet ignores you. Therefore, I have called you that you reveal to me what I should do. Then Samuel said, so why do you ask me, seeing the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy? And the Lord has done for himself as he spoke by me, for the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand. So with me, out of your hand. And we've got into the hand and the gates and everything. And given into your neighbor, David. Are you guys with me? Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord, nor execute his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore the Lord has done this thing to you in this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel into you into the hand of Israel of the Philistines and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me the Lord will also deliver the army of Israel into the hand of the Philistines immediately Saul fell full length on the ground and was dreadfully afraid because of the words of Samuel and there was no strength in him for he had eaten no food all day or all night. He even fasted for that seance. So deceived he was. When men of God can no longer see the difference between evil or good. 
when Eli came into the temple and Hannah was crying out to the Lord for a child, speaking, but not speaking, her lips was moving, having an encounter with God. Eli is so drunk, drunkenness and blind. His eyes was dim and he looked at the woman and he thought she was drunk. And you don't understand this. So a woman can encounter, his church congregation can encounter God more and have more discernment and more sight than the prophet of the church. How many times have I seen ministers, somebody will have an encounter with God and they'll say, shush, be quiet. The person is having an encounter with God. They've lost God. They've become blinded. But God respects authority, you see. God respects His position, His placement. And, and uh, that's why it's prophesied there's a changing of God's coming. And the woman came to Saul and saw the mess, saw that he was severely troubled and said to him, Look, your maidservant was obeyed your voice and I've put my life in my hands, heeded to the words which you spoke to me. Now therefore, please, heed also the voice of your maidservant and let me a piece of bread before you and eat that you may have strength when you go on your way. But he refused that. I will not eat. So his servants together with the woman urged him and he heeded their, heeded their voice and he arose and ground and sat on the bed. Now the woman had fat, had fat had called from the house and she hastened to kill it and she took flour and kneeled it, blah, blah, blah. Next verse. I guess I can preach a lot of this. I just want to get to a point. So she brought it before Saul and his servants and they ate and they rose. And went. Listen to this. A witch has more fear of God than what Saul had. She feared when she saw it was Samuel. And she said to Saul, how can you deceive me? What is witchcraft? Go Galatians 3 verse 1. Before that, go to, before Galatians 3 verse 1, go with me to uh, 1 Samuel, I think it is, 15, 1 Samuel uh, 15 verse 23. Just, just give me five minutes, we're going to pray for you. For rebellion is the sin of, say with you, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So rebellion is the twin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is as the iniquity and idolatry. Stubbornness is the twin of idolatry. I can have this witch here. I can put a pentagram here. Not me now, but I can get on my knees, not a broom, a broom's got nothing to do with witchcraft. I can put a pentagram here with the candles. Because do you know we did this once with the devil sitting here and people were going crazy? Not in the church, out there. South Africa has lost it. And they put a pentagram and I come here and I light the candles and I call up a spirit here. You would think I'm evil. But God sees no difference in that and somebody else that's sitting here stubborn. It doesn't. It's a twin. It's a twin. Suffer not a witch to live. That's what the Bible says. Now rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Some Christians will get to the pearly gates. And God will say to them, just, can you just go stand by the witches there? And the person has a suit on and everything. And he would stand in a crowd where there's like people that have sacrificed. And he's like, but God, what am I doing here? I'm not. Rebellion. What? Rebellion. God sees it as witchcraft. While we're mocking or, or thinking we're better than Satanists and so on. We have the same sin in our hearts. Go Galatians 3 verse 1. So the foolish Galatians. In the Philips translation, it says, O oh, idiots of Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? The word bewitched means three meanings. It means to curse with words and cast a spell on someone. Number two, it means to look with an evil eye. There's none in our church except that they come to spy. 
But if you go to other churches, they'll suddenly look at you like that. And pastors don't have a grace to deal with it. It is the apostolic or the prophetic that deals with witchcraft. I need you to understand that. Are you guys with me? Paul had to come, uh, Paul had to come there. The Galatian church has lost their power. And he realized the power of God is missing in the church. And he said, where is the power? The moment I ministered, it happened in Centurion and here once. When I minister and I feel there's no power, I know witchcraft is present. Jezebel is present. And then I first addressed that. And I'll wait and I'll look till I find somebody who that spirit is operating under. And many of those who have come with us for a long time have seen it. And then we deal with it and the atmosphere opens. Or when I'm missing for long, because then let's say our team and our sons and pastors and so on are preaching, and they might not have the grace of a father. Witchcraft comes in, not because of them, people trying to get a bit cocky now with them and not listening to their authority. And the next thing, the house is out of order. And I come back in and I sense, no, people are not even listening to me, but it's nothing of them. It's because... Uh, if a lion is not there, every monkey thinks they're a lion. Uh, yeah, I'm not speaking of TV advertising here. Okay. But, uh, and then I have to come back and set authority back. And then immediately the power returns. And I'm thankful for when I was so long, as I told you, I had to take a break from February. On and off, on and off. And the church was going strong. You know, we didn't lose one bit of finances. And you don't want to know the finances we need a month. We don't lose people. It was going strong. And that is success. I know ministers that cannot leave their church because they've trained up no one. It's a sign of success, meaning don't come because I'm here. Come because it's the kingdom to be built. That's the only way Kruger's door, devil's door, what they say, is going to be changed. So it means to cast an evil eye when you just sit and look at somebody intimidating. You are performing witchcraft. Then it means to flatter someone. Manip so before this eyes, Christ, next verse. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit? Next verse. Are you foolish? Say with me, are you so foolish? In the Philips, it says this. Are you idiots? that you have submitted to witchcraft, that I come in here and the power is gone. I thank God it's not gone in Kruger's door here or encounter Kruger's door. Not in Centurion. Our churches has always had open heavens. People wonder, how can you have five hour services? Somebody said to me, I must stop. I was only have two hours. So I did. We did it one hour. And after two hours, the whole church dropped. Attendance dropped everything. And I said, not of me more. I carried on the way I felt led. Churches was packed out all the time. Amen. Our services. Be led by the Holy Ghost. What is, manip what, is, what is witchcraft? Let's quickly. Say with you, manipulation. Say intimidation. Say domination. Manipulation is tricking you to do what I want you to do against your will. Intimidation means I'm scaring you to do something you don't want to do against your will something i want you to do against your will domination is forcing you to do something i want you to do against your will that's the flesh side of witchcraft that christians are full of it's in your families it's in your business people's kids do it to parents parents do it to kids the moment there is the leg of manipulation, intimidation, and domination, witchcraft is present. Then you have the spiritual side. Say with the divination. Say sorcery. And say curses. Those are the three legs of the spiritual side of witchcraft. So you have the three legs of the fleshly side. Witchcraft is a fleshly act. Then you have the spiritual side. And so many times we focus and we think witch doctors and there's none and no, It's full in the church with this thing. I've had people come to my house with money and I'll say, I'm not taking one cent. This year, money coming because they thought they could buy me. 
I said, do you know how rich I am? No, I'm joking. But I said, I don't need it. They said, but you're, you're a pastor. Like, like, like you need, I said, I said, let, 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 let's get into, now when you type in Google, just type Leon de Prea, see what comes up. Net worth, net worth, net worth. So it tells you they're confused because I must be stealing money from somewhere. And that's what they want to put out all over. They want to destroy our reputation to say that we're not allowed to have a net worth. What witchcraft is that? One thing I realized, the devil wants to remove your money. So by the end of your life, you can be destroyed when you should be the strongest. He wants to remove money from ministers. What is Leon's net worth? What is this one's net worth? As if we are not allowed to have a net worth. If we take it from the church, different story. Are you guys with me? If God's blessing is not on me, I'd be worried and I'd be worried for you. If he took them into the promised, rank, to promised land by ranks and he took them out of Egypt by ranks. The, those over the thousands, over hundreds, they went in and then the rest came in. Meaning that if you see and count to blessed, it's, a, it's your prophetic right, your inheritance. It is just a matter of time. It is the ranks that is going in and it is coming. You can claim it, you can take it, you can make it yours. Are you guys with me? During lockdown, we lost 60% of our people and our finances went up. 60%. Note every church, no church can tell me they didn't. They're lying. 60% of attendance. We're getting back there to where we were. We're over, I think we're 1,200 people on a Sunday. That's not lying. It's, that's the actual numbers. We dropped to 400, but our income increased. So what God cleared seats for those whose heart is in a vision. Are you guys with me? So the manipulation, intimidation, domination, many of you were under that spell. By family, by bosses, by people currently in relationships. The mo even if you're in a relationship and it's not a Christian, so I, there's witchcraft there. It's not the throwing of bones. The spirit of witchcraft is there. Sorcery, what is sorcery? Sorcery is uh, objects. It's also uh, potions, but it comes down to pharmacia, drugs, medicine. Are you guys with me? A lot of people is under a spell of sorcery. They cannot get loose from it. And God sees it as witchcraft. Pharmacia, those who created worldwide companies, Divination, getting information from another source, not revelation, information, whether it is Facebook or the devil, if it is not God, it's not God. To Samuel 5 verse 10. Now the Philistines heard that they had anointed David, king of Israel. Sit with me, and the Philistines heard. When the anointing comes on you, the devil hears about it. All the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. The Philistines also went. Uh, the Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines in your hand. So David went to Baal Perazim, the city, the place of breakthrough. And David defeated them there. And he said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. That's what's coming this two weeks coming. <laughs> Say with me, Paul Perazim. The Lord has broken through my enemies. Therefore, like a breakthrough of water. Therefore, he called the name of that place, Baal Perazim. And they left their images there. And David and his men carried them away. Now listen to this. Then the Philistines went up again. And deployed with themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Therefore David inquired of the Lord and he said, You shall not, God said to him, You shall not go up, David, this time again. But you shall circle around behind them. And come up in front of them. Of the mulberry trees. And it shall be, say with me, it shall be. When you hear the sound of the marching in the tops of the mulberry trees. 
then you shall advance quickly. He was saying, when you hear the sounds of the marching of angels in the atmosphere, it is in that moment that I'll give you wisdom to advance quickly. And I heard the sound of the marching of angels. That the Lord said to me, I shall cause you to advance, to break through like the gushing of waters. Are you guys with me? But this is what I heard the Lord saying to me, that this night, those who are bound by witchcraft working against them, those who are maybe practicing it themselves, angelic assist assistance is coming, and the bonds of witchcraft will be snapped tonight. Any object in your house, any object on your being, any curse spoken against you, any manipulation, intimidation, or domination against you, any sorcery done against you, any curse, any witch doctor, any spell, say with me, I'll be delivered tonight. So I receive angelic assistance in Jesus' name. I hear the sound of angels marching on the mulberry trees that is going to begin to bring victory. Are you guys with me? For then, say with me, for then, the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. It is the moment that angelic assistance comes. It is the moment that God hears the cry and the sound of the marching of angels. I heard it from the beginning of tonight that angels are present in this place. Your victory is at hand. Angels is going to break the power of witchcraft. The Holy Ghost is going to break the power of witchcraft. Even in your houses where you are watching right now on Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube, I break the power. You'll see angelic sisters coming into your house tonight. Right now, as we worship and we're going to pray, that every bond of wickedness will be broken. That a move of God conference will shake you wherever you are. Will change the city of Kruger's Dorp. Will change the city that they call Devil's Dorp. If you bring the lost and the unsaved, they'll get delivered and saved. This place will be shaken by the power of God. You'll see the Shekinah glory entering into this place. You'll see miracles. You'll see creative miracles and demonstrations of the power of God. Prophecy like you've never seen before. Say with me angelic assistance. Say with me angelic advancement. It is on its way to you. It is coming right now. It is coming into your houses.